All right, let's get started here. All right, uh, so what are atoms? Well, um, they are the basic building block of all matters. You mentioned before when we talked about matter in the last video, we said all matter is made of atoms. Um, so everything is made of atoms that is made of matter. Um, so the best example I have for that is um, Lego Captain America here. All right, he is made of Legos, just like you and I are made of atoms. The smallest thing that I can take him apart into is an individual Lego piece, right? So I've got small Lego pieces like this ear. I have this hand piece, right? I might have like a big one. I can get it off here at the top of his head. So atoms, like Legos, come in different sizes and shapes, maybe even colors. I don't know if atoms really have a color um, to them. Um, but we can combine atoms to form people or things. Um, now I can take an atom, like I can take a Lego. Now if I got out scissors, I could cut this down into little pieces, the pieces of a Lego. And so you can do the similar thing with atoms. You can take an atom and break it into its pieces, protons, neutrons, electrons. You can even take those and break those down into further and further pieces, but they don't naturally occur by themselves like that. When you find it in nature, the smallest you can find things are in the atom. Like Legos, the smallest you can find is an individual Lego. Um, so atoms join together to form molecules, and then those molecules join together to form everything around us. So what does an atom actually look like? It doesn't look like a Lego, right? It looks kind of different. So here's a drawing of an atom. This would be an atom of helium. Um, so you can notice when you look at this atom, um, you've got these three different colored balls. You've got some orange balls, some yellow balls, and some little blue balls, right? We're going to look at what each of those mean. All right, a couple of things to note here is this thing called the nucleus, which is the center of the atom. And that's where most of the mass or most of the weight of that atom is. This is the densest part of the atom. It's the center part. Um, and then on the outside, you have these little things that we draw and we draw these pictures in these little orbits, kind of like how the planets orbit the sun. And those are the electrons. We're going to look at each of these pieces um, in pretty good detail as we move forward. Um, here's another picture of a larger atom, which is an atom of carbon. Um, this has more protons and neutrons, more of that stuff in the nucleus, and it's got a lot more electrons going around on the outside. You can see them labeled there. Now here's a computer drawing of an atom. It just looks a little fancier because it's done with a computer um, instead of like by hand. Um, this is a much larger atom. Um, a lot more of the protons and neutrons here. They change the colors, so blue and um, red for the protons and neutrons. And you can see here there's only four electrons um, in this diagram. Um, there really would be a lot more around this atom. Um, however, this atom, um, they, if they showed all of the electrons, it would be uh, too difficult to see what's really going on. be too many electrons in the way. Um, now, here's the final one. I'm going to erase that. and It's kind of funny that it lined right up on one of those electrons, too. Um, but this is an atom of uranium. It's probably one of my favorite atoms um, as a nuclear engineer. Um, so uranium has 92 protons, 92 of uh, the things in the center and of the yellow ones. There's about 130 or more. Um, so there'd be about 92 electrons around this too. Again, they eliminated a lot of them just so that um, it's something you can see. Uh, so what are atoms made of? Well, I kind of already alluded to it in the last slide. They're made of these three things, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And then you could further break those down if you went into like a quantum physics class with things like muons and quarks um, and gluons. But we're not going to go that far. We're just going to stop at protons, neutrons, and electrons. Um, so we're going to look at each of these um, individuals as we move on. Um, so the first one is the proton. Um, that's the um, orange balls here in the, um, the side here with the little plus signs on them. Now, protons have a charge, have a positive charge. I've got it shown here with this plus sign. And a good way to remember that um, is protons starts with P and positive starts with P or plus starts with P. So that's a good, easy way to remember it. Protons, positive, protons, plus, P, 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 right? Um, so that's something to be important. Now, what do I mean by charge? So let's take a quick break, um, quick little aside here, and talk about what we mean by charge. Um, you can think of charges in atoms. Protons have a positive charge. Electrons have a negative, very much like a magnet. So most of you, I'm sure, are probably familiar with magnets here. Just backwards, maybe that way. I think it's... There you go, north and south. All right, so you have a north magnet and a south magnet, all right, um, bar magnet, um, just like you have a positive and a negative, all right? They're opposites of each other. Now, if I take two magnets, I take one like this and I orange another one next to it, the north and the north together, 
most of you know, I'm sure, that if I tried to stick these together, they're going to... You can't do it. They won't... They won't go together. No matter how hard I try, they're just going to keep pushing each other away. They repel each other. Same thing if I flipped them around and did south to south. They're going to repel no matter what I do. I can't get them to stay together. All right. But if I just switch one of them and put a north with a south, they go right together. They stick together, and then i got to actually pull them apart. So they'll stick together, and i got to pull them apart. Same thing with charges on a, in atoms. The plus... Is like a north, and the south is like a minus, or the opposites. They're just opposites of each other. So if I get a plus and a minus together, like magnets, they're going to stick together. If I get a plus and a plus together, they're not going to go together no matter how I try. All right, so just remember that as we kind of talk through this. All right? Oh, it's got a double circle on this one. Um, so they're found in the nucleus. That's that center section of the atom. I'll, I'll circle out here in big red. The nucleus. That just means the center of the atom. If you've ever studied biology, you might have learned about um, cells, and in the center of the cell where the DNA is kept is also called the nucleus. It's kind of the center, the brain, if you will, of the atom. I mean, the atoms don't think or really do anything. Um, so protons, they have that positive charge, as we just talked about. Um, so this is how much a proton weighs. Um, 1.673 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. Now, if you're not very familiar with how much a gram weighs, it's about the weight of a paper clip, one of the smaller paper clips. So it's not very much. So this number you may never have seen before, a number in scientific notation like this. That just means you take this decimal point here and you move it 24 times, and it's negative, so to the left. So I'd have to move it like this, and then each one of these I'd put a zero, but I'd do that 24 times. So if I really wrote this number out without the scientific notation, I would have to write it like this. That's a lot of zeros. It's actually 23 zeros that I have to write um, before that number, the 1.673. I have to move the decimal. Um, that's a lot to write. So scientists kind of came up with this like code, this scientific notation here that lets you eliminate writing all those zeros. So you know, that, that's just means really, really small. It doesn't weigh hardly anything at all. And here's their radius. We measure that in femtometers. So you might be familiar with a meter, probably definitely familiar with a centimeter and a millimeter. Well, a femtometer is way, way smaller than a millimeter. Um, again, it's a really small number. If you made it in meters, it would look like this. Um, so very small. So bottom line on the size of a proton, they're very small. Just don't worry about the numbers. The numbers aren't important. I'm just trying to be you know, actual here and show you the real size. They're just teeny tiny. All right, so a good way to think about it. If I said an atom was the size of a football stadium, all right? So I took this football stadium here and said, um, that's, a, that's an atom, right, the outside there. Then a marble, a small little marble placed at the 50-yard line, right dead at the center, would be the size, and I've kind of put a little red dot there, you maybe you can see it right here. So that little marble and this giant football stadium of my atom would be the size of a proton inside of an atom. They are very, very small because atoms are really, really small, and the proton is super tiny inside.